Hi, I'm Dana. I'm a neuroscientist who creates art out of brains. By day, I'm an associate medical director at HSC, and by night, I turn neuron portraits into inspiring works of art. I grew up in a very artistic family. My mom is an art teacher. Uh, my grandfather was an art director and painter. He actually painted that painting right behind me on the wall. So I've always been really inspired to find overlap between science and art. A lot of people think that science and art are completely opposing disciplines, but for me, there's a lot of overlap. Science can be really creative, and art can be really analytical. Both have a very definite process where you have to try things again and again and repeat them to produce results that you want to see. While I was in graduate school at the University of Chicago, I studied autism and how it changes the cerebellum, a part of the brain back here that helps control movement, posture, and balance. And during my work, I did a lot of microscopy. And that's when I started with science art. So let me show you some examples. This is a neuron called a Purkinje cell, and it's the principal cell type in the cerebellum. Now, when I first saw one of these through the microscope, I was amazed. This is not your typical neuron. This neuron has many more branches called dendrites than other neurons, and it uses those to collect information from a lot of different inputs. So I use these images to learn how the brain is changed in autism. And then after the experiment, at the end of the day, I turn them into art and I make portraits of neurons. The way I get all of these colors is by doing something called patching the cell. What this means is that we attach a small glass tube to the cell body over here. Uh, think of it like sticking a straw into a tennis ball and we flow liquid, or in this case, fluorescent dye through the straw and it diffuses through the branches of the neuron over about 45 minutes. Lighting up is an indicator of the cell's activity. This is important because we want to see how active the cell is and we want to see how it's communicating with the other neurons in its network around it. We also study these tiny synaptic connections on dendritic spines. So this picture is a close-up of dendrites and you can see these little tiny knobs here that's where the synapses are, and those are one of the molecular sites of learning and memory, and we wanted to see how that was different in autism. One of the main influences for my art is Andy Warhol, and Andy Warhol is really famous for showing art and beauty in everyday objects. And for me, while I was in research, neurons, and specifically Purkinje neurons, were everyday objects. So here I tried to in sort of use some of Warhol's style by showing the same neuron, both with artistic color filters and without. And then here, these are both the same neuron. This is how it looked originally during my autism experiment. And this is how the neuron looked after I added art. One of my other major influences for my science art comes from Santiago Ramón y Cajal. He was a Spanish scientist and artist who was one of the first science artists. He did Golgi stains, which means that he dyed neurons black, and then he looked through a very simple microscope and drew what he saw by hand. And his art has formed much of our understanding of how neurons are connected in networks today. One of my goals with my science art is to inspire curiosity and promote enthusiasm for science. When I hang these pictures in a gallery, what I really enjoy is when somebody comes up to these pictures and says, what is that? You know, it looks like coral or it looks like antlers. And I can start a conversation about science and we can talk together and share our ideas. And I can say, hey, did you know that this is in your brain? And it's helping you balance and walk and learn how to move. And isn't that cool? I'm really excited by the possibilities for analytical people to think more creatively and for more creative people to start thinking in a more analytical manner. I think we can all learn a lot from each other and one of my major goals with my art is to inspire curiosity, promote enthusiasm for science, and get people thinking critically and asking questions. Thank you so much for watching today. I invite you to get involved in science art and channel your inner creativity. Please follow me on social media and we can talk about science art together.